peace of the Lord Jesus, I don't want his story to die in people's memories, the testimony I want to tell is of my brother, my mother only had the two of us as children, and his name was João Amaro, like my father he was two years younger than me, and was called Marino, and he was the favorite of the house and the favorite of my parents because my father always wanted his first child to be a boy, but it was a girl in my case, right? So when Marino was born it was a tremendous joy for dad. He threw a party for the whole family because he was always afraid after I was born that my mother would only get pregnant with girls. Many people have ten girls trying to have the boy, but after me came Marino on the second attempt, and that was wonderful for my father. Having had a couple of children, my mother closed the factory. In my opinion, she precipitated, but as I said Marino was his father's favorite. Not that I felt less loved for that reason, but I really thought that dad's treatment of us was awesome, I got presents every day and birthday presents weren't even fun anymore because almost every day dad had some surprise for Marino, that's why he grew up spoiled, nothing was denied to him, he also became a bit lazy and slack when it came to doing school homework, for example, my mother suffered a bit with him when she was about to slap him to do his homework he always cried and my father would come and take him out of the house. Saying leave the child you're scaring him, that's not the way to teach a child, as a result Marino didn't do any homework, so my brother could do everything he wanted and I didn't think he was bad. It was a succession of my parents' mistakes that I followed for eight years, then my parents accepted Jesus and we started attending church, my brother and I were the dean group, then the teenager group and then to the young people in this phase. I was calm, my brother was anxious, spoiled as always, it was right around that time that he started wanting to date, my parents started to have worry because Marino was meeting a girl yet he doesn't have a job. He promised to marry that girl, when he could not keep the commitment. The girl was disappointed extremely and cried, sometimes her parents rebuke her because of that promise Marina made. My father had to resolve the issue and explain himself with the girl's family with all the patience, while Marina hid somewhere in my father, in church he dated two sisters from the group at the same time, when they found out they fought each other and they were intrigued, the pastor had to make an effort to reconcile the families and in the end one of the families was still angry, although my parents suffered a lot with these things because it revealed all their incompetence in educating my brother, Marina wasn't even moved. He wasn't bothered when he caused the damage and he didn't seem to care and, that's why as much as our father spoke, advised or fought, he did not listen to us. He said that the girls made a lot of drama, and that they fell in love very easily and that none of that was a reason for so much fuss, that soon it would all pass and everyone would forget and everything would go back to normal, that's how he spoke, and once again I'm not talking ill of my brother, just to show you how he acted. My mother prayed and fasted for him but my brother didn't change. In fact, I think he even liked being like that and do what he wanted without ever having to take responsibility of consequences of his actions while our parents resolved everything, he was like that, it's sad to say, at the age of 20 he got a girl pregnant and promised her marriage, but when she realized he was deceiving her because he always promised to take her at our house to meet our family and he never did that. So the girl went alone in a clinic and took the baby out, then she went home and was crying out of control, she told our father everything that day and our father cried it was the only day I saw my father crying because of Marino's problems and without saying anything to my brother she left there and we never saw her again, on that occasion she was also the only one time I saw my father punishing Marino or at least trying. He took his car key and told him he would have to work if he wanted to use the car, this caused problems between him and my father and they started to argue as Marino tried shame his name, I stopped praying for him at that point and thought of course God won't answer this prayer, right, but after that, amazingly it seems like my brother calmed down a little bit spent more time without doing anything, he spent more time at home, he was strange and very quiet. My mother gave glory to God all the time saying that God was working and I believe that was the case, when he turned 23 there was a thanksgiving service there in the house and God used the pastor with great power in the word, 
and my brother who went to church since childhood went forward responding to the pastor's call when he asked if anyone wanted to accept Jesus, and Marino went forward crying no one understood nothing, but I understood he was not a believer yet and that was the day that God arranged for him to have an encounter with him. He burst into tears kneeling there and the pastor prayed for him and after that day you could only see Marino with the Bible under his arm, laughing, going to church. He never missed a service or a prayer circle, there were days when in the prayer circle there were only the little ladies with white hair but he was there the only young man, the only man among his sisters, his pleasure now was to sing praise in church and read the Bible. In fact it was also at this time that he discovered that he had a voice to praise and was very beautiful, my mother cried every time that he praised in the church, and when I said he was going to church too much that he didn't need to go every day he said I'm going, I don't know if tomorrow I will be alive to praise, I have to take advantage of this opportunity that God is giving me to please him, and it really was like that, it was beautiful to see how God had transformed my brother. Our father was very happy and peaceful, and because of that for a few months everything was peaceful. But the enemy of our souls didn't give up, and he sent a girl to our church who started to attend, and she was a beautiful, tall, thin blonde, well groomed and she caught everyone's attention. The problem was that she was almost naked and this girl started to get closer to Marino. They got closer, talking and laughing and as time went by they even arranged to arrive earlier before the church service in order to keep talking, my father didn't like it and I was busy telling Marina to be careful because that girl wasn't a believer and was not transformed for she was worldly and it was not going to work, and that was it, my father's peace ended little by little. Marino fell madly in love with that girl and soon they were seriously dating and no one could forbid it because they both were of legal age. My brother quickly forgot the services, the praises and the Bible reading, at the beginning he said he was going to convert her but what happened was that she took him out of the church now they lived on the beaches in shopping malls where she wanted to go, whatever she wanted, Marino left the house to not having to listen to my father talking bad about her and ended up moving in with her without getting married or anything, Marine abandoned his family, church friends and etc. I couldn't stand seeing my mother crying and praying all that night and the silence inside the house, that burial atmosphere, my god, how my parents suffered here, I was so desired when my mother almost left, we slowly realized that Marino no longer came to the house and it was that girl who prohibited it, we discovered that she had been a wife and had been married twice at least. That's what the few people who know her said. One day I was coming from the bakery and I met Marino, I stopped and hugged him. I asked him how things were going if he was okay, he said yes in one hand he had a bottle of beer that I ignored and in the other a large bag of things, suddenly the bag he was carrying ripped and a bunch of things fell on the floor, I realized what it was and bent down to pick it up to help him, but when I looked with more attention to the things that were on the floor. I got up very quickly and I stood there and let him put it all together alone. These things were objects that couples in the world use in private for sexual pleasure and they are sold in these stores, finally, there was even a rubber object the color of human skin simulating the male genital organ, you understand me, so I dumped myself and left him the trying to carry those things, I was thinking that God tore that bag on purpose because God wanted me to see, that it was too much. I also knew that that woman had no living conditions and that Marino was the one who paid for her house with the money my father gave him, so I felt after that episode where he was very embarrassed by me seeing those things so he quickly said I had to leave because so and so and I don't want to say her name, but he quickly left saying that the so and so was waiting for me, while he walked away, I thought my god how can someone who yesterday was completely freed and today he is thus enslaved by sin because the only word that described my brother's life slavery, then god brought to mind the image of this guy, that's my sister-in-law since she arrived at the church from the first day she has already set her eyes on my brother, she has already introduced herself to him with those short, tight fitting clothes, hair done with heavy makeup. Her eyelashes were huge and so were her nails, it seems like she came prepared so that he couldn't resist, as if it were a diabolical plan devised to destroy my brother, when she arrived at church for the first time I commented and told my mother about her outfit, and she said it's Satan envoy, 
if you don't watch, you fall, but let's keep praying, my daughter, your brother's soul will not be lost, so time passed and one day he knocked on the gate at home, my father wasn't there, he was only working for my mother and I were at home, I went to welcome him, he said that he had broken up with her because she had betrayed him and kicked him out of the house, then he stayed at home for a few days, but only a few days because he cried day and night and did not eat and didn't do anything, so he ended up going after her and they came back and got back together. They came back and suddenly he was there at home again, sad and when he was feeling really bad he would open up to me and tell me something. For example he told me that the reason for their last separation was that that she wanted to spend a night with him and also with another boy she met on a nap to get Eve, that is a three night stand or threesome, he replied that he would never do that but he also didn't want to lose her and they were in this impasse, beloved now you to see the level where that woman was, but my brother still loved her and was suffering too much he told me he asked her to marry him but she messed around and didn't want to get married. I don't think she did. It was agony, I realized that she did everything to make my brother suffer and did it on purpose, one time he asked me if God could change her if he prayed, if God could make her love him, I was so sad that day but of course I said yes and even said that I would help him with prayer. He loved that woman so much or was he so deluded or chained in that relationship that he was willing to appeal to God, he wanted to pray but I was willing to pray for him my good God. I was praying for him. I, I had hoped that God would free him from that woman's clutches, no matter what way because he was suffering too much, one afternoon he was at home and she came by car with her friends to pick him up, my mother had asked him not to go for she had prepared the dish that he liked the most and wanted him to have lunch with her, but he didn't stay and left with the girl and they spent the day together, and at 7 pm someone came to the house to say that Marino had been very ill and was admitted to a hospital in the city center very strange because my brother had iron health, so you can understand, he never had been admitted to a hospital in my life, my mother and father and I went to there, my mother managed to enter the room and speak to him. Comma Marino said that he was on the beach drinking with a group of friends and also with that lady and her cousins, etc. and at a certain point after drinking a certain drink he felt bad and they took him to the hospital and they left him there, my mother stayed with him for a while. We prayed for him and he was reconciled with God, I want to draw your attention, sister, to say that since he was hospitalized that lady never came to see him, so after he reconciled with God my mother calmed down more and we went to home so she can rest, my father stayed there to wait for the result of some tests that Marino had carried out to see if they really discovered what had happened to him, Marino asked us to stop by the hospital reception and pick up his clothes, his wallet his cell phone and everything else he had and so we did and we went home, when we got home my mother went to pray and stayed for a long time in the room praying, I stayed in the living room resting a little, I took his cell phone and I started messing around, his password was the same as mine, he had no secrets with M, e looking at his cell phone I opened Facebook I saw photos of him there with this guy and through his Facebook I went on the lay Facebook and started looking at the photos, the first thing I noticed is that there were no photos of the two of them on her Facebook, it was as if she hid him from everyone, I started looking through her things, I looked around at the older posts and suddenly I saw a photo of a girl that made me shudder, I immediately remembered who the girl was who was hugging my sister-in-law, it was the girl that Marino had gotten pregnant years ago and who had disappeared right, after I went home to talk to my father about everything, I ran and I showed that photo to my mother. Immediately my mother remembered her but did my brother know that, it became more than clear to me that it was about revenge, at that time when we were talking about this the phone rang it was my father asking us to go to the hospital, when we got there my father was already in the hospital lobby waiting for us and he was immediately coming towards my mother and hugging her and saying that Jesus had taken Marino that he had not resisted, my mother collapsed to the ground because she didn't expect it so there was no suspicion at that time of some kind of poisoning but nothing could be proven he had drunk a lot and used some other things, I don't want to say about the investigations because the lady my sister-in-law disappeared, we didn't know much about her, actually, we were not able to locate her, we didn't even know her last name or anything or where she lived, the neighbors didn't know her by the name, time passed and it became sadness, 
I don't want to go on and on talking about the people who did this to him because we don't know and even if we know I don't want to say justice will come of God, my mother and father sought consolation in the fact that Marino had reconciled with the Lord on his deathbed, because of this way we know that there I hope to see him in heaven, but this is the story of my brother's brief trajectory on this earth can serve as an example to someone, I'm happy. Everyone chooses their own path just don't forget that God allows us to reap all the fruits of what we plant, God does not always interfere in our choices and much of what we go through.